All right, so he has said that the Senate impeachment trial for President Trump is DOA dead on arrival. He wanted to put his colleagues also on the record to show how they would likely vote. In fact, 45 senators did vote against proceeding with that impeachment trial. And the senator from Kentucky who led that effort joins us now. Senator Rand Paul, good morning to you. Before we get to that, though, we want to talk about uh, Senator Patrick Leahy. We know he was hospitalized for a bit last night. He's set to preside over the trial. Have you spoken to him? How's he doing? I haven't, but I've heard good things. I've always been friends with Pat Leahy. He's one, even though he comes from the left, he and I have worked together on civil liberties issues over time. I still don't think it's appropriate, even though I'm friends with him, for him to be presiding over a trial, though. It's one of my points I made yesterday was that if the Chief Justice can't bother to walk across the street, it means this really is an invalid trial. They're trying a private citizen. That means you or I could be impeached in private life. They're not trying a president. If they were trying a president, the chief justice is supposed to come over. He says he's no longer the president. That was my point. This isn't a constitutional procedure. It's a political one. Yeah, you've said many times this trial is illegal. You've called it a sham. All but five of your Republican colleagues uh, agreed. Why else do you feel this is unconstitutional? Well, the thing is, is there's the idea of whether or not we should impeach a former president whether that's good for the country, whether it's wise, whether it heals the country, or whether it divides us further. There's also the specific question of whether or not they're saying, oh, he incited a insurrection and caused all this violence. Well, if you look at the speech carefully, he said, go fight for your country. And I asked yesterday on the Senate floor, if you're a Democrat and you've never given a speech that says, go fight for your country figuratively, uh, raise your hand. And I didn't see any hands going up because Every politician in the land has used that type of word, fighting, figuratively. But the other thing is, is about violence in specific. I was at the ball field when the Bernie Sanders supporter nearly killed Steve Scalise, nearly killed a few others that were with us that day. One of the staffers was 10 feet from me who was shot. But the Democrats were using insightful words like, the Demo Republican plan for health care is you get sick and then you die. This was inciting to violence, but not one of us thought Bernie Sanders was responsible for that violence. In fact, we took great care to be careful with our language that we didn't blame him for the shooting that almost killed Steve Scalise. I don't think Democrats are being very careful, though. They're just sort of, you know, them plus their allies in the media are just saying, oh, yeah, um, Donald Trump causes violence. Well, if you look at his language, he never encouraged violence. And the people had some crazy people there who did commit violence and they deserve to be punished. But the thing is, is I don't think Democrats are being fair here. They're being political. And I think it's a bitter, a bitterness that they won't give up on the election. This is one more continued sort of uh, bitter rancor that's coming from the election. I think it's a big mistake for the country. Let me tell you what Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has said. He said, quote, it makes no sense whatsoever that a president or any official could commit a heinous crime against our country and then be permitted to resign. So as to avoid accountability and a vote to disbar them from further office, what is your response to Senator Schumer? Well, that's assuming that there was a crime. That's the whole debate. Did he commit a crime? So did uh, Bernie Sanders commit a crime when he said you're going to die and then somebody went it up and shot, you know, tw at 20 or 30 of us on the ball field? Did Cory Booker commit a crime when he said get up in their face, you know, get up in the face of these Congress people? Did Maxine Waters commit a crime when she said, get together in a group, invade restaurants when the Trump officials show and, and mob them? Did Kamala Harris commit a crime when she said to people who were burning down our cities that she would pay for their bail? You know, there's a lot of politicians who get involved with things and by extension violence occurs, are they all responsible? And so that's the real question. Do they want to imp impeach Bernie Sanders, Kamala Harris, Cory Booker? No, they don't want because they've got a double standard. Um, but Schumer's just assuming that, the, that he's guilty of something, that there's no evidence that the president said anything that encouraged violence. And Senator Paul, I appreciate you staying with us. We are going to continue our conversation with you. Some of our stations, though, across the country are going to take a quick break to go to weather and traffic. But uh, you're going to stay here with us. For those folks who want to watch this interview, it's going to be on our, our Facebook page uh, as well as online. Uh, on Twitter as well as Instagram. Very quickly, right now, it seems that Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell relented on the filibuster stalemate, uh, as we know. He had this stalemate with Senator Schumer because he says he got assurances from West Virginia Democrat Joe Manchin and Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema. Can you trust Democrats will not try to vote to get rid of this filibuster, though? 
Uh, no, I think they may someday, but it's good news for now. And I think it's important for the American public to know that when we were in the majority, Senator McConnell, myself and others, we supported the filibuster, which is supporting the rights of the minority. It supports the rights of the minority not to be run over by the majority, and it ensures compromise in our country. And we took the principal position, even though it would have been easier in the majority to get rid of it. President Trump asked us to get rid of the filibuster to make it easier to get his agenda. He would get it by simple majority without getting 60 votes. Senator Those of us who were principled resisted that. So we resisted it. It's good that there are at least two Democrats who are principled in resisting it now. Will they stay with it? Only time will tell. Senator Paul, you had an interesting exchange with ABC's George Stephanopoulos. I want to show our folks at home uh, a little bit of that real quick. And I won't be cowed by people saying, oh, you're a liar. That's the problem with the media today is they say all Republicans are liars and everything we say is a lie. There are two sides to every story. Interview somebody on the other side, but don't insert yourself into the story to say we're all liars because we there, some fraud there, in the election. There are, not, there, are not two, there are not two sides to the story. This has been looked at in every single state. The election oh, sure there are. certified there are in every There are two sides to every state. story. George, you're forgetting who you are. You're forgetting who you are as a journalist. If you think there's only one side, you're inserting yourself into the story to say, I'm a liar. What was your thoughts after that exchange? <laughs> What's well, funny, I put that in, in contradistinction to our interview. Just a minute ago, instead of telling me your opinion, you gave me Chuck Schumer's opinion, and then I responded to it. That's traditional journalism. That's the way it's supposed to work. But the journalist is not supposed to say, oh, there is no other side of the story, and you're a liar. It, this is the problem with the left, and it's becoming such that whether you're on uh, social media or anything else, they're going to ban you if you have an opinion they don't like. We have so 10 example, seconds. Right, we have 10 seconds, Senator Paul. What do you think is the future of the Republican Party? What do I think is the, say again? The future, the future of the Republican Party. I think we're always redefining ourselves. The party's an empty vessel unless we imbue it with values. We aren't the party of one person. I've had many disagreements with uh, Donald Trump and will continue to, but I've supported the party and supported the idea that we are the party of less regulation, less government, less debt. And I'll continue to try to shape the party in that future. All right, Senator Rand Paul, thanks for joining us.